introduce our uh, latest and greatest technology, which is our Helix Digital Printer. Um, it's a direct to substrate printer, UV digital. Gives you an example of some of the work that is put out by the Helix and uh, all different types of vessels, different types of substrates, which do include glass and ceramic. Give you a little table of context here. In, I'm going to go over InCup's background today. Market overview for drinkware and containers. Printing trends that we've seen. Um, introduce the Helix to you, show you the machine. Vessel types and different types of adhesion and benefits to screen decorators that can use the Helix. This is a little introduction for me. I manage the Northeast Sales Territory. Obviously this picture was taken in the summer. <laughs> I have 28 years of experience primarily in the promotional and advertising industry. With me today is Ben, who's in the back here. He's the founder and president of Incups. He's got an engineering degree from the University of Vermont, a master's in business from Papson, 30 years of experience in manufacturing and selling specialty printing machines and supplies, and he holds four industry patent, patents currently. Little history of where the company is from, our background. Uh, in 2001, Ben began the company. It started basically with a patented ink cup for pad printing. And what this did was it revolutionized pad printing because <clears throat> up until then, there was an open well where you would pour ink and solvents would be exposed to the environment. So you would always be constantly adding solvents, whether you were in the northeast in a damp atmosphere or the southwest in a dry atmosphere. Ben invented this closed cup technology that gave you the ability to pour your ink into the cup and run your pad printer without having to continuously add solvents and adhesion promoters. <clears throat> In 2003, we became the uh, exclusive distributor for a line of inks called Seracom, and today we distribute this ink globally. It's both for screen printing and pad printing. We've invented new technology for pad printing back in 2006. We launched a machine called the Cobalt 1000, which changed plate making in pad printing from exposing with an exposure unit outputting film, very time consuming, to going directly from a laser machine, etching plates, which gave you consistency in depth on the plate gave you a much more consistent imprint. From there, we use that technology with pad printing to introduce tagless printing for the garment industry. So like you see today with Hanes and Fruit of the Loom, where people are going to remove their tags, printing the care content, the country of origin, and their logos. That's what we introduced with Hanes, Fruit, and today you'll see it with other people like Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, Reebok, and others. <clears throat> In 2011, we had a growth and we opened our first offices to support that type of business in the garment industry in Central America and in Mexico. And then in 2012, we jumped into the UV digital printing game by introducing a machine called the XJet which it turned the printing industry, primarily for promotional, upside down. Uh, it, it developed a patent, we developed a patent conveyorized belt that the production would lay the products on the belt and have a continuous UV digital printing direct to substrate on flat, primarily flat products. But the beauty of the XJet was it could print on multiple substrates, wood, acrylic, ceramic, glass, all different types of plastic. Because of the XJet, in 2013, we had a great expansion and we moved currently to our headquarters in Danvers, Massachusetts. And we've obviously grown considerably. We've increased inside customer service as well as outside sales, um, research and development, and engineering department. 
From there, we'll jump to 2016, which is really what we want to talk about today, which was the invention of the Helix UV direct-to-substrate digital printer. Um, this was a groundbreaking development for ink cups and for the industry. Uh, the, the beauty also of the Helix is that it's built in the USA. So our business units consist of tabless, promotional, and digital. Since we've moved into our global headquarters in Danvers, we've uh, expanded throughout the world to support uh, small sales and with techs around the world. As you can see, we're in Asia, in Europe, Central South America, and North America now. If you also notice, in each of our locations, we support the sales and the distribution of our machinery with technicians. A little market overview from our perspective on drinkware, vessels, and containers. There seems to be a battle for attention using higher quality graphics, shelf space when it comes to retail. You want to stand out from the others by using these high quality graphics. We've noticed it in promotional, which is where our foundation is. Um, people want to have designs that wrap around the vessels, top to bottom. We've also noticed it with glass, and glassware, barware, wine and spirits, specifically licensed merchandise also with um, collegiate logos, professional logos. You have to be very uh, detailed to the T, the registration, the color matching. And also web personalization has uh, given the Helix uh, great access to the market because it enables you to do one-off, if need be, very quickly. And then lastly, outdoor. So the Helix also gives you the ability to do stadium or amusement park drainware. <clears throat> we've noticed our trends that we've seen with our customers are compressed <coughs> lead times. We've also seen shorter runs and quick change between SKUs. The high quality multicolor graphics um, give, you know, the, the Helix outputs great multicolor graphics, four color process, as many spot colors as you need. You can also do personalization with this machine. And you can run this machine on an order for say 500 pieces and each one can have a different name or a different graphic on it. We're introducing web to print where you can go directly from the web bring your artwork in, bring your order in, and it can translate right to the Helix. Printing one-offs with unique graphics, as I mentioned, and an automatic workflow. We won, we were very honored to win two Golden Pyramid Awards at the PPAI show. That's Ben on the left. <laughs> we won specialty process and decorating on hard surfaces. So showing some trends, tall images, full coverage, 360 degree wraps. We talk about 220 millimeter tall images. Again, the 360 degree and seamless full wrap, as many spot colors as you need, as well as the ability to print on contoured shapes and curved surfaces. The, our inkjet can throw a dot at 10 millimeters, which enables you to go a little bit further around the curve. It's ideal for printing large images, wine and champagne glasses as well. Some of the trends and some of the features that the Helix offers is the ability to do mirror printing. So you can print the same image that shows through the inside of the glass that you'll see on the outside. It eliminates the white background color that you'll see from transfers being applied to pint glasses and other types of glasses. <clears throat> the Helix also offers a feature for clear varnish. One of the things that we've seen is a lot of companies are looking towards laser or etching glassware. The Helix gives you the ability to do full color and incorporate a clear varnish tone on tone that creates a raised image or like an etched look or effect. It's perfect for personalization. 
As mentioned, we do we work with a tremendous amount of collegiate and pro licenses. This seems to be a very high growth market for us. Tight registration graphics, pants on action as well. You can do multicolor images, printing graphics that are unattainable with screen printing, full color capability, and the beauty of the Helix is the simple setup and it's quick changeover. Whoops. So I'm just going to show you a quick video of the Helix in action. So as you can see, all you need is one tool. There's no uh, mixing of inks. There's no screen making. You go from computer to Helix to product. The other beauty about the Helix, and that's where the name is derived from, it's a patented Helix, Helix technology of printing where the part spins. So what this does, it affords you the ability to print on one side one image and on the opposite side a completely different image. And it doesn't really add to the cost um, or the, the time specifically for printing because your parts are spinning, whereas the heads are staying stationary. So, the Helix background is a ground-up development by Incups. As I mentioned, it's built in the United States. We launched it in 2016. We've got the ability to do high-quality, multicolor decoration on cylinders, vessels, and tapered drinkware. It's image height dependent, meaning at four inches high, which is what uh, determines your speed, you can do approximately 300 parts per hour. If you were to double that and go to an 8 inch high imprint, of course it would be cut in half. But again, the, the ability to do a full wrap um, or either side decoration on a cylinder does not change because of the helical system and the fact that the part is spinning and the print heads are staying stationary. 60% of our customers uh, have more than one machine. We found that shortly after the first sale, um, their business has increased in this specific market, and within nine months or so, they're coming back for a second machine. 40% of our Helix are run at three shifts. We, as I mentioned before, we have support globally around the world. Uh, in cups, technicians are the ones that service you. Uh, there's not a third party involved. We send our people who are trained internally and certified by us to do installations on the Helix. So superior print quality. The tooling and the changeover are part of the beauty of the Helix. You can go from one SKU to the next, changing over in less than five minutes. Another beauty for the Helix is the ability um, to upload each individual SKU one time. The Helix has a teach feature to it. So if you have one part, for example, a pipe glass, you will load that into the Helix one time and you will teach the machine the diameters of the pipe glass from top to bottom and it will save that for you. So the next time you load that pipe glass, all you have to do is rip your artwork and it applies it to the, that pipe glass. So you'll never have to enter or set up that pipe glass again. If you go from the pint glass to a wine glass, you can teach the machine the parameters of the wine glass and it saves it as well. The other beauty is your artwork comes in to um, the Helix and the software and it comes in flat. There's no manipulating the artwork because once you teach the Helix the diameter of your parts, it knows when you pull the pint glass, for example, down that that artwork has to be skewed for those exact dimensions, and it applies the artwork without manipulation. The other um, features are 220 mil millimeter tall imprint. We have uh, many different shapes that the Helix can print on. As I mentioned, the throw of the dot gives you the ability to print on contoured items as well. 
and it's a production workhorse. The machine wants to run every day, wants to run multiple shifts. Software and workflow development, API integration into custom, customer operating systems. So we have the ability to integrate the software with your operating system and uh, continue a, a, a workflow uh, that's seamless. Automatic artwork prep, which I just mentioned, it processes the image, there's no distortion required, job management and workflow. So from receiving your purchase orders, your artwork going right into the Helix and the Helix can identify the specific items that it's going to print. It also provides production metrics and ink costs, which gives you the ability to quote your customer much more efficiently. We value support. Um, as I mentioned, we have technicians throughout the globe. Uh, as you can see here, we've got about 15 and a half technicians in our facility. <laughs> this technician seems to be cut in half for some reason. The success stories for the Helix are reduced drinkware order quantities. So if you're used to running large runs, this machine gives you the ability to do short runs, quick turnaround, you can go from minimum quantities to your customers down to 10 pieces, one piece, and lead times are cut by 14 days to the same day shipment if needed. <clears throat> we found large restaurant chains are now private labeling all mixing glasses and spirit bottles for all of their facilities. The new technology has helped reinvigorate some companies. We actually have a customer that was very stagnant with their business because they could not deliver direct to market and, and quick speed, turnaround time, and low minimums. This company invested with us in the Helix and has turned their entire business model around. And today you can go online, you can go to their website, choose an item, upload an image, and in one day they'll turn that one item around to you. It brought back energy to their market and put them in a leadership position. It also eliminates supply chain issues by printing only when what's necessary. So unlike screen printing or transfers where you may have errors or misprints, you tell the Helix how many units to print, and that's what the Helix prints, exactly. There are some customers of ours that seem to want to go all digital. They're looking to replace screen printing, transfers, decorating, whatever it might be, and trying to go all digital. All digital. It reduces your footprint in your production facility. It gets rid of mixing inks, making screens, screen washing, and so on and so forth. As I mentioned, the Helix can print on all different types of glasses, ceramic vessel types, mixing glasses, spirit bottles, can even print on candles, growlers, wine bottles, aluminum cans, stainless tumblers, powder coated, all different types of plastic, cosmetic bottles and jars. Adhesion. <clears throat> it seems the limited resin in digital ink makes it challenging to adhere to glass. Each market we found has its own adhesion criteria. It depends on the price and the purpose of the wear. Where is that end product going? is really what's going to determine what the criteria is for adhesion. We offer solutions with flame, flame with pyrocell, primer wiping, jettable primers, and spray-on coatings. Testing methods. When we introduced the Helix, all of a sudden we had to become aware of what tests um, consumers needed for these products. It seemed to us to be all over the, the board. So we found a scratch test and a tape test, but primarily this ASTM crosshatch test method seems to be universal for most of our customers. It varies really by different applications. We've also done ice bucket tests and sweat tests with our inks adhering to their products. Some of the benefits to a screen decorator is offload work from fully automatic screen printers to smaller, less expensive he Helix printers. 
You're able to run small order sizes and samples, one piece if need be. Be able to work with more sizes, different style containers. As I mentioned, the Helix, you just need one tool for that one specific item. And again, changing from the one style to the next is under five minutes. You reduce consumable costs, no screens required, no screen washing, no emulsion. It's all gone. It goes from computer to Helix to part. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? So you do not adjust your substrate angle to the head? You do. That's part of the setup. Okay. That goes within... Um, when you're teaching the machine at first, obviously you're going to do that. But then, yes, when you change from one stop to the next, if there is a taper, it's within five minutes, an adjustable knob that you'll angle the substrate to the heads. Now, 220 seems to be the industry standard for all of these heads. Can you then move the substrate to produce a larger image? After you do 220? It's based upon the UV lights to cure the ink. So we carry two different lights for the helix, one basically at four inches, so then you can just add a second one, which will give you about 8.6, 4.3 4 and 4.3. But if I want a 400 millimeter tall image, can I put it through a second time in a different position? Like can that head do they? I don't believe that one, in one rotation it could do that. You could reload it, yes. Could you bring half of it yeah. yeah, sure. Yes? What kind of scratch resistance do you think? I'm sorry, what kind of scratch resistance? Well, we, we as I mentioned, we do the ASTM, so we, there's a, we use a tool that uh, is a crosshatch. Right. For adhesion, but what about for mechanical resistance on the smaller arm? No, we don't use that at, at this point. But again, it's, it's different for every market. So depending upon what your adhesion requirements are, we, we have in-house um, residential and um, industrial uh, washing machines that we can offer testing for, if need be. Yes? What's, what's a dishwasher to your laundry on Currently, it's 150. Washes? Commercial or residential? Um, it's residential, uh, commercial right now. So, but we, we, we are constantly improving the ink and the adhesion. So what happens after 15 inch washes or 70 inch washes? Does it fade away or chip away or what? No, what we happens? haven't seen that yet. And do you have any effects of many shine? Does many shine affect your ink and adhesion? Uh, we've been using dishwasher. Um, lemon shine, though, I don't know if we've used lemon that. Lemon shine is a chemical which is used in dishwasher, dishwasher, and a lot of the lemon shine is being used now. Yeah. And so that actually is very corrosive for any threat, especially for for organics which are there. Right. So what is the effect you've seen of lemon shine, which has been used in a lot of villages, on on the on on your on your decoration? To date, I don't believe we've tested for lemon shine. So when you test it, are you testing it with detergent? Yes, or with a powder detergent. Okay, so I think mean, that's a simple thing. You can see next time the detergent is about lemon shine. Sure, we we can we can check that. In you have about three hundred pieces of imprint per hour. Correct. That's based on what size? Four inch. Four inch by four inch or four inch. Four inch. Size? Wrap around, doesn't matter. And does it make a difference of what size, what, what coverage you have with four inch? Is yeah. that what Yeah, full wrap. Because of the helical technology. So the heads are remaining the same, the parts are spinning, the ink is hitting the product. Regardless, your parts are spinning. <coughs> so it does not change. What's the cost of the print? It's about $200,000. Print? Oh, per print. Okay, depending upon the height, you're anywhere from 13 cents. Yeah, if you're up to eight inches, it could be as high as 28 cents. 
full rack. And obviously it could be lower if you're only doing one side or opposite side. I think, uh, well, we'll, well, I'm here this afternoon and tomorrow, but if I'm not mistaken, it's about six inches in diameter. Maybe five, five point five, but I can confirm that for you. Sure. No, in fact, when I showed you the clear varnish with the raised effect, what that is is you're um, keeping your part in the machine and you're just laying your ink one on one layer on top of the other. What's your average scrap for set? Yeah. In fact, sometimes you could put, you could tape a uh, vellum over the part for testing to begin. And you just pull the vellum off and run. So the different colors, it's CMYK. Yeah. CMYK white white and a clear varnish, if 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 you want. Standard right now is with the varnish. So what about dark surfaces? No, it's two white heads. So two additional white heads, or CMYK? CMYK, white, 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 two white heads, two white heads. and a clear varnish. You've got seven heads there, machine? Yeah. Or purging the machine? Automatic purge. So that's done automatically. And what are those above in the shop? Above failure. Well, surge, we, we protect the machine. With we'll surge protect. What if there's a power failure? Thank you. No, no, they won't get clogged. First of all, there's a purge. We also supply a solution to purge the heads. Um, and no, they, they, you can cap them. Uh, not as of yet, but we're working on that. Yes. Looks like uh, you can't do handled items. That's correct. Kind of left that out. <laughs> There's no way to create it rock back forth. Not as of yet. So you guys have built your own pre-treatment devices, machines outside of it. It's not integrated in the same. It's not integrated yet, no. Like so for a jettable primer, that could be in the future. But right now, um, you know, there are jettable primer machines. There's flaming, there's pyrocell. We also offer a primer wipe that the operator can take with a rag and wipe the surface, which is good also because it takes dust and any, um, whatever it's mold release or grease or whatever it might be that's on the surface and removes it. Solid color, translucent colors, just all solid colors. Solid, solid color. The machine has tremendous capabilities, though, to increase the doublet size, to lay down more ink, lay down less, trapping, registrations. What's the resolution? Um, it, it varies up to, I think, 1,200 dpi. So maximum you can go to 1,200 dpi? I believe so, yes. At, at 1,200 dpi, you can get 300 pieces of an hour? At four inches high? Yeah. Yes. I, well, it may slow down the machine slightly, but you get 250 pieces I can't. I have you have to see the artwork. Okay. You have to run it on the machine. Is it pinning between each color? No. So it's just one. One UV hit. Rolling in, rolling out. Yeah. What's the <coughs> sorry? What's the orifice size? I'm sorry. The orifice size. The largest? No, the diameter of the the print head. Oh, that I, I I'm technically I don't know that. Again, I'll be here this afternoon. I have Ben with me, who's a little, who's the person behind the machine. We can answer that for you, and we'll be here tomorrow as well. Yes. Well, primarily glass for that, yes. And plastics, do you have some primer all the time? Some you do not. Like, That's the beauty. Like ABS, there's no primer need. And, and other ones, you have 
Sean Polycrope, Billy Newell. Yeah. 